hello again welcome to the vision channel I'm Ron Jones and for this particular program we are in the city of Bristol and as you will see from the background I'm standing very close to the Elim City Church and soon I'll be talking to its senior minister the Reverend Peter Davis whose ministry God is blessing in a very wonderful way and we'll be talking about what's happening in the church. I have a special interest here because for 30 years my wife and I worked at this particular church and it's thrilling for us to know how God is blessing right now. Peter, thanks for giving the time to be with me and welcome to the Vision Channel. Thank you. Thrilled that you're able to be with me. Perhaps it would be a good thing for, for me to set the scene. It was uh, a way back in 1952 that uh, one of the outstanding evangelists, British evangelists, Reverend P.S. Brewster, came to Bristol and took uh, the Colston Hall, one of the largest halls in the city, for three weeks evangelistic crusade during the month of August. Now here's the amazing thing. He was able to get a block booking during the month of August because no boxing promoter or anyone else would think of running the risk of having it. Mm. And God bless that and hundreds of people came night after night. And we were grateful to God for the way that he moved. Our problem was that we had no building. Yes. When we'd finished in the Colston Hall, we were just like gypsies in the city. Uh, we, we met wherever we could get a building for the occasion. There was the Victoria Rooms at the top of the, tower, top of the city. There, there was uh, the old Empire Theatre, which has long since been demolished. There, there was Shepherd's Hall, I think that might even be still in existence. And then we were able to get the Corn Exchange for a whole 12 months of Sunday evening. Then there came a time when we had to think about the building. Yes. And I went to a man, Mr. Meredith, who was from Port Talbot, thought that I might take advantage of the Welsh connection and asked him if he had a, a plot of land that we could use because he was in charge of that kind of thing for the council. And he, he offered me three plots, none of them very much use. But one of them was in fact the site on which we are right now but the trouble was it was just a narrow narrow plot about 30 feet wide and about 100 feet long and I thought we can't do very much with that and I remember one Friday setting off early in the morning to visit all the estate agents that I could fit into in one day asking them the same question have you got a factory or an old warehouse that we would be able to turn into a place for holding church meetings and the answer in every case was the same no sorry we haven't anything like that on our books and towards the end of the day I was going back home discouraged and uh, not very happy about the day's work and I passed one estate agent not very far from here and I thought well one last one for the day and I went in and uh, talked to the man. No, he said, I haven't anything like that on my books at all. He said, I know exactly what you want. I was in Edward Jeffries's band when he held his crusade here in Bristol. He said, there's only one thing I've got on my books and that's an old electrical factory and they want 1,100 pounds for it. It's not far from here and you know, it was right next door to the plot of land that the council had offered us. Wonderful. And then within a very short time, we noticed that right next door to that was a half-built hall. A, a group of Christians had been moved from one part of the city and they, they were building this. Actual fact, they were doing most of it themselves and it was about half finished and they wanted to sell it and we bought it off them and so things began to move in a marvelous way 
and we immediately saw that God was in the business and we were able to open our first church seating about 350 to 400 people in 1952 in actual fact just two years after the pioneer crusade in the Colston Hall and I believe that uh, God was in it in those yes. very early days. Mm -hmm. What do you think our next problem might have been? Well, finding the money to build, I expect. <laughs> You're right. I mean, you've never experienced that, have you? I'm experiencing it now. <laughs> Are you? And it's a challenge. It is. We had one lady, Lily Skelton. Right. I've heard of this lady. You heard of her. Mm. She, was, she was marvelous. Mm -hmm. And she, she had a little post office saving book. And I've never forgotten that she had 84 pounds in it. Yes. And she brought the 84 pounds. It's wonderful, isn't it? Ah, it is. Mm. But th that's how God works, Pete. Well, that's what I think everything that God orders, he pays for. You know, it's like the delivery from the builder's yard. It's, uh, it comes in with paid for in full. But yeah. often we have to make that connection that very often his vehicle for him to pay for it is through us. Yes. But when we sow our seed, no matter how small or no matter how great, it also brings a rich harvest, not only in the church, but in our personal lives. I, I think that's true. Mm. It do, does something for us as that's well, right. as yes. for the people around us. Mm -hmm. and, and then there was another case. There, there were some folk who came, they had a shoe shop. And one day, they said they'd like to see me. So I went up to their shop and they ushered me into one of their rooms. And we chatted for quite a long time. And then eventually they came out and they brought a shoe box. And they said, Pastor, we would like to loan this money interest free towards the building. And in the shoe box there was there was two thousand pound in really? in brand new pound notes. Wonderful. And then uh, a little later they sent for me again. And there was another 1,000, again in a shoe box, all brand new notes, and then another 1,000 came, and all of this was absolutely interest-free. And then they wanted to see me again, and, and uh, Kath, my wife, said to me, you know, you ought to tell the Coles that um, if, if they wanted their 4,000 back in a hurry, <laughs> <laughs> It yes. might be a problem, uh -huh. but they came and they they gave another five hundred, yeah. four thousand five hundred. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I did tell them that it, it would take some time. <laughs> yeah, and um, one day when I got home, Cass said to me, "Mr. And Mrs. Coles would like to see you," mm -hmm. and I thought, "Oh, this might very well be it then." And I wasn't quite sure whether to go and see them immediately and get it all over or perhaps take a slow boat to China. But I went and we chatted and at the end of the evening they said to me, Pastor, we wanted to know that that four and a half thousand pounds is no longer a loan. Mm. It's a gift. Wonderful. And... Uh, you were excited, I bet. Oh, I, I was excited. I took the shoebox home on each occasion and, <laughs> and put it safely under the bed until the morning. <laughs> but, uh, and things like that happened. But and that builds confidence in you that God is faithful, isn't it? It does. Mm. And I think, it, I, I think it's an inspiration to the people as yeah. well to, to see that... Uh, God provides. Yeah, God provides. And then we were able eventually to open our first building here on the site uh, just about two years after the campaign mm -hmm. so that's in, a short time in 19 yes uh, and uh, I, I thought there might be some difficulty moving out of the corn exchange which had right. no church link mm -hmm. and then moving into a church I thought we might uh, lose some folk but uh, it was marvellous how, mm. how they came and uh, we, we kept uh, the quite large... Did you find that people really followed the vision? Yes, I did. Um, 
I think that's the. I, I think that is an important mm. factor. The clarity of the vision. The clarity of the vision is, mm. I believe, is of vital importance in church life, and you have, you have proved that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you are people proven. follow vision, don't they? Yeah, they do. They're attracted. I think it's like a magnet. They get attracted to vision. They want to be part of something yeah. exciting and dynamic. Yeah. And God is like that, isn't he? He is absolutely. And I think there's something about a vision that inspires people, and you don't. You don't have to inspire them by rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. You inspire them by a vision. That's what we're. we're I think so. And one of the things I've discovered, I don't know about yourself, is that you know whenever I've asked God. Um, for some understanding what he wants to do. He never responds with goals. He always responds with plans. That's right. You look at Joshua going into the promised land and, yeah. and God mapped out the strategy for him. And, yeah. and it's exciting just to, to know that, you know, God just doesn't give the end result, say, this is what I want to take you. He says, this is how you can get there as well. Yeah. And it's wonderful. You sound excited. I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm always excited. But I don't blame you for that. Our major problem now was that, that we didn't have any place for extension and we didn't have much for Sunday school work. And we tried to get land all around the area, property on the block where the church now is, but we couldn't get any until one day a man put his property up for sale and we bought that first house and it backed right onto the property that we already owned. And then a, a quite outstanding thing happened I found out that the house next door, which was just blocked off, had been bought by a developer and he was going to do something with it. I'd just got his name and address, phoned him up and uh, said to him, I'd like to have it and what we'd like to have it for. And he said, all right, he said, you can have it and I'll let you have it for the price I paid for it. Wonderful. So we bought the house for a thousand pounds and here's the amazing thing. That was the only contact I had with him on the phone that day. Never met him, never spoke to him after the solicitors just completed the work. And so we had more space for enlarging. And right next door to that, there was a transport cafe. And I remember the fella phoning me up and, and he, as, as a bargain employee, he said to me, I'm going to sell this. I want to get out of Bristol. I'm going to right. sell it. Right. So but word it got around that you were buying the property. Is that right? Uh, that's right. Yeah. And um, so he, um, <clears throat> he said to me, uh, I'm so keen to get out. I'll sell it to you for what, we gave, for what I gave for it. Really? And he was going to sell it to us as a going concern with, mm -hmm. with all the transport right, folk okay. we were in. So he said, I gave 12,000 for it. Right. And uh, you can have it for 12. And we didn't have 12,000 pounds. But about a month later, he came back to me and he said, um, I'm down, down to nine, and eventually came down to seven. And I said to him, um, Come back to me when you're down to four. Really? Uh, I think that's one of the exciting things, though, when you know God's with you. It gives you an awful lot of confidence, doesn't it? Does, it? Yeah. it means that it's even when awesome. mountains come up, you, yeah. you don't need just to buckle. No. But you can believe that they can melt like wax. Yeah, that's right. His presence. And, and, um, and eventually, we bought that site for four and a half thousand pounds. And at the same time, we had rent coming in from those who were living in the transport cafe. A bit of income, yeah. Yeah, and Wonderful. there were two p car park spaces. Yes. So we let those car park spaces out. Right, okay. Because car parking is a problem around oh, here, yeah, isn't it? It is. It was then, I take it is now. It's, it's, it's bigger for you now. It is. It? Big issue. Ah, how are you going to cope with that? Well, we've got lots of strategies uh, um, to employ to right. um, work that one out. And I remember that just about that time, as a matter of fact, it was in the month of July in 1969. We, we, we had the whole block. And right. The council were very kind to us mm -hmm. as well. They sold us some blocks of land here at ridiculous prices, really. So some all this was happening during the period when my mum and dad were married in the church. That's right. Yes, 1963. Now, that's right. Yeah. How are they now? They're doing wonderful. Oh, right? we, we'll, we'll put a photo up of them. We'll, we'll have them on this program. Wonderful. My dad's a pastor in Pontypool. Yes. Yeah. And um, yeah, doing great things for God. It's ah. exciting.
That's great. But the thing so, that excites me about it is that when they, they were married there, or here in the church, they had no idea that their son, no. 30 years later, would be pastoring this church. I think it's terrific. And it's just amazing, isn't it? If oh. you really knew all the things that God had for us, yeah. it would just and overwhelm all, us. All the links yes, how so, sort of come together, don't Puts they? it all together. Yes. Uh, well, it, that happened, we got that. and. Hmm. Then I felt that in July of of that year, when we had all the land, I felt that God gave me a vision about a church that would seat uh, well over 500, Mm. uh, that there should be car parking facilities, that there would be separate rooms where Sunday school classes and departments could meet, and there would be a place for senior citizens to take about 20 people at least. How how I was going to get that vision over to the folk was a bit of a problem. Well, I think that's what vision is all about though, isn't it? I think uncommunicated vision is no vision at all. No, that's right. And to deliver that vision, you have to be able to communicate it. Yes, you do. And to, to burn something in people's hearts because so they've got to capture it here, haven't they? They, they have, mm. yeah. I've, of, I've often thought uh, about uh, Nehemiah and w- when he went and saw the walls of the city broken down and, mm. and, and the gates almost finished mm-hmm. for God gave him a, a vision mm-hmm. and he shared it with a group of men. Yes. And, and I thought to myself, that group of men had been there all the time, but they hadn't bothered about the walls. But they might have thought, you. Well, you ought to have seen this years ago when the walls were uh, all right, it was, it was super. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But there was one man's vision and burden that he yes. communicated, isn't it? That's what and they captured it. You know, it's funny you mentioned that um, text because that was the um, verse that I came to Bristol 13 years ago to preach, was invited to preach. And yeah. I preached on that very subject. Did you? And uh, being burdened for a city. Uh, from Nehemiah yeah. and how God was calling up a generation to rebuild the walls. It's amazing, isn't it? it? Is. The links and oh. what God has put in place. Yes. You know, the thing that excites me about God is that with us, we start at the beginning and we try to get to the end. But with God, He starts at the end. He says, that's how it's going to be. Yeah. And then He works back from there. Yeah. And then He says, let the beginning begin. Because yeah. He's already concluded that's right. the end. That's so amazing, oh, isn't it? Oh, and it's exciting. It is. Um, we've used that word a lot, but it is really. Yes, it's true. It's true. <laughs> i tell you what happened then. That was in July that year. And in December, my church treasurer, a great fellow, Bob Helps, he invited Kath and me and our family up to his home just near Christmas. And so we went, and at the end of the meal, we moved into their lounge, and then Bob came down with a model. It was a model of a new auditorium including car park spaces with little model cars on and trees and various places where Sunday school classes and young people could meet. And he even had mapped out on that model a place to take at least 20 senior citizens into special accommodation. He, he said, God has laid this on my heart, Pastor. And he said, I've been working on this model since last July. Really? So when when God gave me the vision, he gave it to him as well. Yeah, just catching it. Yeah, Yeah. it's wonderful. And I'll tell you, yeah, and when you're going to spend a lot of money, it's it's good to have the treasurer sharing your vision. (laughs) (laughs) And so that's, um, and they were were exciting days. Mm -hmm and all part of God's plan. Talking about history, Ron, there's an interesting building across the road called the Ron Jones House. What's all that about? Well, we, we, when we were able to buy all the land around here that God opened up for us, the, we, we also went to the council uh, about the needs of people for housing. Right. And so, and we linked up with the Elim Housing Association. Was that- an area of social concern that you yes, had? Yes, it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we had Hathaway House and Henderson House and Phillips House, 
all giants of the past in, in real Elam. leaders in Elam. Elam. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we were able to get that large piece of land opposite, which is, a, I, I suppose, it's a kind of hostel for young people. I understand Just about 45 or 50 in. They use it very much for refugees these days. That's right. Oh, mm -hmm. that's good. Mm -hmm. So, and they decided to call that uh, Ron Jones right. house. Another giant. Well, I wouldn't say that, <laughs> but the same is a kind of you. Um, just one thing I'd like to mention before we finish this program. I remember when the building had almost reached completion that I spoke to the architect, a young fellow, Tony, you know, about the finishing touches. And my idea was a, a super cross floodlit, of course, outside the building. Uh, and, and he came to me one day when I'd asked him to think about it. He came to me and he said, Mr. Jones, I've decided on the cross. I'm going to put up, I'm going to get two railway sleepers and oh, right. bolt them together. Mm -hmm. I was more than shocked. <laughs> I said, no, you can't do that outside our, our lovely new building. And he said, well, yes, that's what I'd like to do. So I remember saying to him, well, you will plane them down, won't you, right, Tony? Okay. And varnish them. No, he said, <laughs> just put them up as they are. Mm. And I said to him, Tony, that isn't nice. And he preached to me one of the greatest sermons I've ever heard in all my life. He said, well, if what you preach in there is right, mm -hmm. the cross of Jesus wasn't very nice. That's right. Was it? Mm. And he was, he was spot on. Mm. And I'll tell you something, Tony's railway sleepers are up there, unvarnished, yeah. just as he planned them. Still there. No and plans to move them. No. Good. The cross is still full of power. But it was not nice for him, but so wonderful for us. That's great. Mm. I, th I think we'll have to finish on that note. Yeah. About the cross of Jesus. Will Central. You repeat, will you repeat that last little bit again? Not so, what did you say, not so nice? But it was not nice for him, but so wonderful for us. There, I, I think um, we've done fair justice to the past. Yes. We, we were able, we were able to do some outreach work. Mm -hmm. um, we, we did, we reached Canesham and Western That's Super That's a church Mare, planting program. And, yeah, and, yeah, and Chippenham. Mm -hmm. And at least in a couple of those places, there are quite flourishing churches. Oh, those now. churches are vibrant. Now, yes. I want to talk to you about the present. Right. And I want to talk to you about the future. Mm -hmm. But our time for this program is just about gone. Right. So can, can we do another program, Pete? It would be wonderful. All right. That would be amazing. And uh, we'll talk about those things. Yes. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, it's been a privilege. Thanks for giving the time to chat Thank to you. me today and uh, for sharing in our chat together. Mm -hmm. It's been more than an interview. I think when we work it out, I've done more talking than you have, <laughs> but we'll leave it at that. So um, thanks ever so much, Pete, for chatting to me. Bless you. See you again. My thanks to the camera crew again and to you, the viewers, for letting us come into your home. And an especial thanks to Peter Davis for giving us time to be with us today. You know, for me, it's been quite exciting to be able to talk about things that God did for us in the past. But we have to face the fact that the past is really the beginning of the present and leads on to the future. And when I chat to Peter in our next program, we'll be talking simply about that. What's happening in the church right now and what his vision is for the future. And I can tell you, it will be really exciting. Look forward to you being with us then. God bless.